you and I, we didn't know each other, actually. Like, you mentioned two years ago, and I want to say that we've now known each other for maybe a year. It may not even be a year. It, it, it feels like around by time frame or so. And I know we first connected because you just kept on tagging me in things. And I remember I kept seeing the same name over and over again, tagging me in instructional design stuff. And I'm like, hey, thanks, man. You're always sharing about my content and my work. But that was so interesting. It was a different approach compared to what I've seen from other people who just try to be able to kind of do like that cold call reach out on LinkedIn as a message saying like, hey, can we have a quick chat? So great to meet you, something like that. You took this different approach. So walk me through what you were thinking of when you were like, I'm going to make these posts, I'm going to tag these people, and then I'm going to hope for what? <laughs> what were you hoping for from that? Yeah, that's a great question. So when I first got on the platform, I started connecting with people and I did do a little bit of cold outreach, just messaging someone and saying, hey, I noticed your experience or your current role or your education and I'd love to chat. And it wasn't terrible, but it definitely felt kind of uncomfortable for me and it wasn't my favorite way to network. And so I just saw that when you started posting, you would start conversations with people that wanted to engage instead of this cold message of like slap, hey, you should talk with me because I'm interested in what you do for work. It was people saying, I like what you're talking about and I want to talk about it too. And then it was a lot easier to go from a comment on a post to a direct message and say, Hey, thanks for your comment. I'd love to hear more of your thoughts. And then if the messages started getting a little too long, sometimes they would even pitch and say, Hey, let's take this on a call. I'd rather just jump on a phone call with you or a zoom chat. And that was way more preferable for me instead of cold DMing people and saying, Hey, we should talk. And so when I first started posting, I was still only a year into a master's program, still really, really clueless about a lot of parts of the field about jobs and still am learning a lot. And I wasn't sure what to post about. I, was, I wasn't going to just copy and paste from my textbook and this is the definition of andragogy. This is what I'm learning about adult learning theory. I was like, I, I want to find some way to start an engaging conversation. And I saw this idea of curation. So rather than sharing new ideas was curating other people's ideas and then sharing what was valuable to you and starting discussion around that. And so since I didn't know anything about instructional design outside of my master's program, I started looking to see, hey, are there other YouTube channels or videos that I haven't seen yet in my classes that I like? Are there podcasts? Are there books? And so I just started to kind of post some of those things. And then I would get people commenting back saying, whoa, I can't believe you missed this book. I can't believe you missed this podcast. And it really blew my mind because I would have never realized how many books and podcasts and videos there are on instructional design. It just was such a new world to me. And so it just so happened that you also have a book and a podcast and make YouTube videos. And so you kept coming up and I was like, man, this guy is probably going to hate me for tagging him and everything. But I'd go <laughs> check out your videos or I'd check out the podcast and I was like, hey, this is good. And so I would just, I just tag it. And I thought, well, I mean, worst case scenario, it gets like it gets him some attention and best case like I make a connection out of it and I think um oh I lost my train of thought for a second um <laughs> I mean it's a best case scenario for all because yeah. if it, and, and certainly if it wasn't for and I guess like this is a way of like summarizing that too is that if it wasn't for you actually doing those things it's entirely possible that you and I would not be chatting right now yeah like, absolutely that is like when a hundred percent, especially when I know that Mike, if you look at my inbox right now on LinkedIn, like it's a disaster. The amount yeah. of unread messages that I have is just, it's not a good time. And I'm like, <laughs> I will follow up everybody eventually. <laughs> well, right. gonna, it, might, it might take me months, but like eventually I will do it. But when you see some of the same names all the time, and of course they're being like polite and respectful and super awesome, then it's like, oh yeah, I, I do. I definitely want to engage with this person on LinkedIn because they seem great as opposed to just like, hoping maybe inside of an inbox somewhere that someone's going to see a message over time. So your strategy was to me, it was different because you approached it like a marketer, like a, a marketer thinks about creating content online or like, you know, a social media person, influencer, whatever you want to be able to say, unlike with other folks who are trying to be able to do different approaches that still work over time. But yours just kind of stuck out from that because you made, you made carousels too. Isn't that what you were doing? Yeah, the time, and I think that was something that I just kind of picked up on. So it actually kind of ties back to high school. So I was a cross country runner and I had this idea one day that I was just going to make an account because there was this profile that I followed called runner problems and they would just 
tweet and complain about running things, about shin splints, about carb loading, about races and hills and the heat. And then one day they just went completely inactive and stopped posting. And I waited and waited and they never came back. So I made my own account and I started posting and I would just follow the trends. If there was a meme that was really blowing up on Twitter, I would borrow that meme and adapt it for running. Or if there was content that was relevant, I would just kind of jump on the trend and turn it into running content. And I ended up growing a, a decent following. I think I, by the end of high school, I had like 10,000 followers. And it was fun because I was like, hey, I'm finding this little community of running people that they run regularly, but they complain about it just as much as I do. So that was kind of a fun niche to find. And so I kind of applied the same tactics on LinkedIn was, well, what are other people posting and what are those trends to jump on? And it's not quite the same because there's not usually like a meme trend on LinkedIn. It's not like there's one meme blowing up and everybody posts that same meme, but there's content trends I had noticed. So I was seeing everyone making carousels and I thought, well, it can't be that hard to jump into Canva and make a carousel. So since that gets better engagement than a text post, I just thought, let me give it a try. And I would do a little bit of comparison. I would post something as a text post and then I would make a carousel version and post that. And nine times out of 10, the carousel post would do better. So I realized, hey, this is working. This is, it's a little bit more work, but it gets a lot better conversations going. And so that was something that I just kind of played around with and had a lot of fun getting to be creative, making content in Canva, kind of trying some new design skills that weren't as strong for me and just saying, Hey, I'm going to not only curate some books or curate some podcasts, but then I'm going to try and find a way to lay it out in a carousel and in a content form that's going to be engaging and actually start some conversation.